Piston selection is one of those important decisions that need to be made when building an engine. So one thing that gets confused easily is the material type on a forged piston. So let's cover that today and how to decide which one's right for you. So this video isn't going to be about which brand is better than the other. Quite honestly, the two types of forged materials, most piston manufacturers will offer both of them or sometimes just the 2618 material we're going to talk about in a minute. But Molly, Diamond, Ross, uh, Wiseco, CP Carrillo uh, all offer a 2618 material. The 4032 material, uh, Molly, Icon, SRP, or JE, Wiseco, uh, they'll offer that material. But those are the two types of forge castings that we're going to talk about today. Uh, we won't talk about the cast pistons, which are uh, out of the big block here. Uh, just not what I'm going to use the, the vehicle for. I need something a little bit stronger. Certainly a hyper eutectic piston is a good option for a lot of street vehicles. Here's the ones that are going into the small block uh, that's going back into the GMC truck. Great piston for a, a good street driver. But today we're just going to talk about the 2618 and the 4032 material and the differences between the two and how you can decide which one is best for you. So let's take a look at the pistons that I did get. Now, we're not going to do like a full unboxing, talk about the piston rings and all that. We're just going to concentrate on the piston today. But I wanted to show you a couple of things uh, about these uh, that make it a little bit different. Uh, Molly is certainly my go-to brand. Uh, again, there is tons of good manufacturers out there on the market. And again, this video isn't about my preference it's really about the material types and you really can't tell the difference by looking at them uh, you know by the coating of the material or the look of it they're just going to be uh, basically by the casting of the material so that's what we want to talk about today is what that looks like and what are the certainly the unique things about each one now these are a 2618 material and what makes these a little bit unique uh, in that is the 2618 compared to the 4032 has a lot less silicone in it. And what that means when you have a low silicone content is it affects how it expands. So these expand rather rapidly. If you remember in the old days, uh, people would talk about, you know, piston slap on a set of forged pistons, uh, even though they didn't really know what the material type or anything that meant. That's what it was meant for. These have to be bored a little bit differently. There's a lot more clearance between the piston and the skirt and the sides uh, than there are on a 4032 because this piston expands by 10 or 15%, if I remember correctly. And that's the reason why uh, you get that kind of noisiness when it's cold is the, the skirts and the piston tend to move around in there until it warms up. It gets to its thermal uh, full thermal expansion and allows it to kind of seat itself up against the side of the, the the cylinder bore. So when these expand, it just takes up that clearance and the operating temperature, the quieter they get. So the 2618 is a little bit higher stress piston. It'll take a little bit more abuse. Now these are primarily used in a racing application, but on certainly the big block that I'm building, these are primarily going to be used in the street. But I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to end up doing with it. The thought is maybe down the road, I may put a small turbocharger on there. I don't know. Uh, but I figured with the abuse that it's going to take, I want something a little bit more aggressive. And that's why the 2618 was selected. So for the folks that are going to use this in a drag racing application, these will handle a lot of horsepower, boost, nitrous. Um, that's what makes this piston a really good you know, choice because it handles all that pressure and the abuse of it. Now, the 4032 is a little bit different. It's got a higher silicone content and that reduces that expansion rate. So they're bored a little bit tighter between the piston and the cylinder wall because it doesn't expand the same way that a 2618 does. So that low uh, thermal expansion rate uh, just means it's more of like an OE type of. Uh, piston to uh, cylinder bore clearance. So uh, you can run very high horsepower on a 4032, but it's less likely to survive any really harsh, nasty, um, catastrophic things happen, backfires, um, 
you know, certainly in, on nitrous, it's maybe a lean condition. The tune becomes very critical on a 4032 piston to handle some of that aggressive stuff. Now, the 4032 material uh, in the same type of piston is typically just a little bit lighter. So sometimes folks will opt for that uh, if they're willing to take the risk on, you know, getting the tune wrong. But the 4032 is a really good street strip, you know, type combination, good piston. Um, very, very, um, the, they wear a little bit better, I guess, on the 4032, where the uh, the 2618, because it doesn't have that uh, a wear capability that the, uh, the 4032 does, the 2618 tends to wear out a little bit. But when you're in a racing application, you're not trying to get 50, 60, 70,000 miles on it. You're looking for X number of passes or seasons or whatever before you're going to uh, change the piston out, rebore it, whatever the case may be. Now, as far as the makeup of the material, I think all the manufacturers are just a little bit different on, on how they put these together and the types of material combination. I'm sure it's a little proprietary of what exactly they use, but on, the, uh, on most pistons, on the 2618, you have a higher aluminum content because you have less silicone. So 90 to 94%, somewhere in there, 92, 93%, I think is what most of the 2618, but you've got copper, iron, uh, nickel, magnesium, and then a small amount of silicone uh, that is in this 2618 material. I think there's also a little bit of titanium in there as well, too. I can't remember all of the, the certainly all the materials. Now, 4032 is easy to remember because it doesn't have that many much material. The aluminum content is around 85% somewhere in there, and then 11 to 12% somewhere in there is what the silicone content is of those pistons. That is what helps uh, keep it a little bit, uh, um, you know, the, the, the piston size a little bit more true, where uh, the, the aluminum piston uh, in the uh, 2618, it expands a little bit more. That silicone really helps limit that. But same thing, aluminum, silicone, magnesium, copper, and nickel are the primary materials in a, in a 4032 piston. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you're, the real thing to, to understand is what are you going to use it for? How much power are you going to build? Are you going to throw a power adder on there? And really, how much abuse is it going to get? And in my case, because I, the Chevelle, uh, I'm certainly okay with a little bit of that cold um, piston slap uh, or certainly the uh, the noisiness of uh, that forge type of material. I'm certainly okay with that. It's going to see a little bit more abuse, um, and I'm completely okay with that. Could I have run a 4032 in that big block? Absolutely no problem. I would have no problem with that. It's still a very good street piston. I'm not looking at making eight, 900 horsepower. It's going to be a seven, 750 horsepower engine, and that's it. Um, so the 4032 could have been a good combination or a good choice for this as well. But I went ahead and went with the 2618 because, well... I just know what I'm going to do with the thing, and it may get a little squeeze of nitrous here or there, too. So uh, certainly not uh, opposed to doing, you know, a turbo or a, a maybe a, you know, a centrifugal tile type supercharger on the, in the future. But uh, really, the uh, it would need a cylinder head change because the compression is just a little too big for these, but uh, uh, should, should be good either way. Now, certainly whatever your brand choice is, the best thing to do is if you're just not sure of the material or the type of piston, call the manufacturer. They all have a really good tech lines. They're always very willing to help and help you sort out what you need. Again, Molly is my preferred brand. It's what I use in pretty much everything. But like I said, there are so many good piston manufacturers out there on the market. Don't be afraid to, to be you know, a diamond guy and that's what you're going to use or, or, you know, as a, you know, as a racer or whatever, you're only going to use JE. Those are fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but they'll tell you what you need and, and maybe a, a forged piston isn't what you need. Maybe a good hyper eutectic. It just really depends on what you're going to use it for and how much abuse it's going to be. Certainly again, the, the, the GMC truck is getting a good hyper eutectic piston because it is not going to be a very big horsepower application. It's a very, mild torquey cruiser and that's it so if you got any questions on material type on the forge piston or maybe a piston choice for what you're working on don't hesitate please leave your questions down below i'd be happy to answer them and uh, again if if you're not quite sure 
pick up the phone, call, email, whatever, and uh, your favorite piston manufacturer will tell you what you're, what you're best with. So anyway, if you got any questions, leave them down below, and we will catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.